Sierra Rose, Gregory Bowers, Dasha Antipova, Stephanie Jockman, Kevin Mahoney, Jack Dickens, Geraldine Paredes, Max Morinelli, Nicole Yakura, February 28th, 2017. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live! Hey everyone, are we live? Yes. Okay, that's the most awkward intro we've ever had. <laughs> Normally everyone gives us some love and so, hey, we're here at Housing Live, everyone! We're there! And so it was really fun. Off camera, we've got, uh, we have Jack, who's our cue person, and everyone was so intently watching the opening that we just came live and we're like, oh, wait, um, we're doing a show. So now that we're here, my name is Gregory Bowers with Housing and Residential Education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto in housing is best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Got an incredible panel of guests tonight. We'll just run down the line real fast. Kate Ashmore from the Honors Living Learning Community. Welcome, Kate. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you. And next up, we've we've got Monica Miranda from the Center for Student Involvement and Fraternity and Sorority Life. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. And last but not least, but certainly tallest, we have the Dave Kloiber from Housing and Residential Education Assignments. Dave, welcome. It's a pleasure, Greg. This is like your hundredth show, right, Dave? Maybe. All right. So, Me too. Well, glad to have you back. Play your cards right. You just might get to come back again. Thank All you. right. So for those of you watching, we talk about this being live for a big reason. By being live, you can engage with us in real time. Send us your questions on Facebook or YouTube. For those of you viewing on YouTube, there are a couple steps to make sure you can log in and ask your questions while we are live on the air. So we're gonna roll a short video for you. We'll be right back with Kate Ashmore from the Honors Living Learning Community after this. If you have a YouTube account, please take this time to sign in so you can post questions during the show. Don't have a YouTube or Google account? Think again. Every USF student has a Google account. To get started, select Sign In. Next, enter your USF email address. Don't type in a password, just select Sign In. Then, you will be prompted with the USF NetID login screen. Type in your NetID and password, then click Sign In. Congratulations, you are now signed into YouTube with your Google account. Now that you are signed in, please make Rocky happy and subscribe. You can do this on our YouTube channel page or below the video player. We are back. I am Gregory Bowers with Housing and Residential Education. And so we were just talking about our opener and we think it's, it's better than what happened at the Oscars. And so we win. All right. So uh, we are speaking with Kate Ashmore from the Honors Living Learning Community. Kate, welcome to the program. Tell us, who are you and what do you do here? So I'm Kate Ashmore and I work with the Honors Living Learning Community, what we call the Honors LLC for short. Um, and I am the person who helps coordinate the communication between students and the faculty at the Honors College and the staff at the Honors College to make sure everyone's on the same page. So you get lots of emails from me when you live there and um, definitely keeping you guys up to date. We also help coordinate programs and events um, to keep our students engaged and to help them succeed while they're here at USF. Awesome. And so. Um Thinking of the Honors LLC, there are a lot of students out there watching, a number of parents. Why should a student choose to live in the Honors Living Learning Community? I think the top reason that I have heard is that it really does feel like a community and even more so like a family. When we ask students, what's the one word that you would use to describe the Honors LLC? They say family and they say community and they say connected. Um, and so they just really feel um, like they're getting the best possible experience when they live in our community. Um, and we are there to foster that and to really grow that. Uh, so we're here to make sure that students feel successful um, in their academics and their personal growth and their professional growth because um, we want them to be a full, well-rounded student while they're here. Awesome. And so uh, just to discern, because I, I've heard from some students before where they think if they're in the Honors College, they're automatically living in the Honors Living Learning Community. Is that true? No, so there is an application process. Um, we encourage all of our honors, LLC, uh, honors College students to apply to live in the Honors LLC, but there is limited space, so getting your application in early is the best way to ensure that you get to live where you want to live. Uh, we also welcome Provo Scholar Program uh, students and Holcomb Jenkins Scholars and um, 
The last one is the National Merit Scholars. And so sometimes those overlap, but we welcome all those types of students to fill out the application. Excellent, excellent. And so um, one thing that, that I was wondering about is the focus community aspect of the Honors LLC. What is a focus community? So the focus communities, we are kicking off this coming fall. Um, so all of our incoming students and our returners will be the inaugural class um, in our brand new building. And so the focus communities, there's gonna be two. One is called Educate and Create, and the other one is Build and Innovate. Educate and Create is for students who are interested in education and creation, um, but also education as far as maybe not so like just the teaching, but also educational theory, educational law, so all of those different aspects. In addition, we have students that are interested in crea uh, creating works, so artists, photographers, fashion designers, uh, musicians, whatever your interest is, we really want to encourage you to explore that while you're here. So we're creating spaces for students to come together. And then the other space is build and innovate. And those that is for um, people who are interested in technology and building and architecture um, and new and upcoming technologies and innovations. So we're really trying to encourage you. And we're going to provide resources to help to actually facilitate that um, exploration. And these communities are not limited to your major. So if you're an education student and you want to be in Build and Innovate, go for it. If you're a pre-med student or not an engineer and you want to join in with the musicians and the educate and create, we're more than happy to have you there. That is very, very cool. And so this is uh, going to manifest itself in, in physical spaces inside the residence hall, right? Exactly. So uh, one of the great new things about our building, Summit Hall, is that on every single floor, there's going to be an activity lounge and a quiet lounge. And so on two of the floors, we're going to create uh, one activity lounge will be dedicated to educate and create. And on the other floor, that will be um, the activity lounge will be dedicated to build and innovate. And so that space will actually be fitted out to look like and to have resources there for those students to utilize. Awesome. That's excellent. So, uh, and I heard you mention at the open here, so you said Summit Hall is where we're going to have the Honors LLC next year, right? Yes. So for those of you watching, that's in the village, the brand new buildings are still being constructed. They'll be fresh and new for them then, living in the Honors LLC. Right? Yes, they will be the inaugural class there too. So they will be the first ones that get to live in those spaces. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see how that looks and how the new community feels when we move over there. That's awesome. I'm really excited to hear about that. I hope I can live there. I'll be someone's roommate if they let me in. So we'll see. Um, tell me, what, what makes this experience special for the residents living in the Honors LLC? Trying to think back to some of what our students have told us um, in different things. Um, I know that they're just like really, usually it's like one experience. So one of our students would tell us that on move-in day, the, you know, you move all your stuff in and you did the bull hall and you're in your dorm and you're like, your parents are gone, you're like, what do you do? And they actually had students that were in there on their floor who were like, hey, do you want to go play video games? And so that night, the very first night they moved in, they were all there playing Mario Kart. And so there was just that community feel from the get-go. Um, so I think that that is really what makes it a special place to live on campus. That's really cool. And so we have a lot of parents watching as well. And so do you have any advice for parents as they prepare their children for this transition to college? I think. It can be hard to let go um, and to, to really believe that your student is, um, is going to be okay here. And so I would encourage the parents to realize that there's a lot of staff that have been trained here to really support those students in their transition. Um, you can always connect with your student. And I think it's really important as a parent to show your student that you believe in them and that you believe that they're going to have a great experience because that makes a world of difference. Excellent. Well, Kate, thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm glad to be here. And of course, for all of you, those of you watching, uh, Kate's still going to be up here. The whole panel's here. So if you have questions about the Honors LLC during the program, just type them in the comments. They'll send them to me right here on the set. We'll answer you in real time. Uh, first, we've got a few videos for you, and then we're going to be speaking with Monica Miranda from the Center for Student Involvement and Fraternity and Sorority Life. So let's roll those clips. We'll be right back with more USF Housing Live after this. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm CJ Watkins. Uh, my parents are in the military, so I've been traveling around my whole life. I went to high school on the border of Germany and the Netherlands, but my parents were from Florida, so I've always kind of had a weird attachment to there. My first impression of USF was how beautiful the campus was. I noticed there was so much wildlife too. It was definitely more of a connection than the other schools that I had to visit. The orientation team leaders, they made me feel a lot more welcome. It was a lot of school spirit too, and that was something that really stayed with me. I loved homecoming week. There was always something to do. Week of welcome was pretty nice. I'd never really seen something like that before. One of the best things about USF would definitely have to be how diverse we are culturally. 
I met people from around the world and was even able to meet someone from my own high school. Make sure that you visit the school you're looking at because you may look online or, you know, get all the letters in or fill out the applications. And then you visit there and you don't really have that same connection. In high school, you kind of have your parents or your teachers tell you to do this or that, but with college, it's definitely self-reliant you're going to be doing 95% of the work on your own. And so it's really important that you stay grounded to make sure you're completing your assignments on time and that you go to class. All right, and we are back. So now we're speaking with Monica Miranda from the Center for Student Involvement and Fraternity and Sorority Life. Monica, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Well, thank you for coming back. I know you were with us last season. I'm yes. very happy to have you return to the show. Me too. So can you tell us, who are you and what do you do here? So as you said, my name is Monica Lee Miranda and I serve as the director for the Center for Student Involvement and Fraternities for Life. Uh, and what I do is really I get to have a lot of fun uh, with a great team of people who are dedicated to making sure that students have transformational experiences and opportunities to get involved and engaged in the life of the campus, in the life of their university, in programs and activities, in organizations, in research, and, and, and finding them, uh, helping them find their path to involvement here on campus. And so, uh, should students be involved outside of the classroom around here? Absolutely, Greg. <laughs> so why is that? Well, and I'll tell you, I've been doing a lot of research lately for my own dissertation work, and I've been searching the theories that talk about student involvement, academic and social integration of students, and what I'm learning and what the research is showing is that students who are more involved in college, in student organizations, or in some way, whether they're working on campus, uh, or they're, being, uh, they're in a student organization, or they're doing research, but as long as they're involved and engaged in something outside of the classroom, those students have the higher propensity to actually persist, be retained, and graduate. So it's about student success. So student involvement to us equals student development, which equals student success. That's excellent. So what I'm hearing is be involved, you'll do better, you'll graduate. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. That's incredible to hear. Um, can you tell me, what are some of the involvement opportunities available to our students at USF? There's so many, and we have some right in our office and in our area in the Center for Student Involvement and Fraternities for Life, where students can get involved in fraternities and sororities, students can get involved in any one of our programming boards, students can get involved as involvement consultants and help other students find their path to involvement. But we don't only promote what we do, we also promote what else is out there. There's undergraduate research opportunities in the undergraduate research office. Uh, we've got opportunities within New Student Connections and networks that they have for students to get involved, especially our new students coming in and kind of getting their feet wet and feeling out what's going on on campus. And then we have the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement that has a lot of opportunities to get involved off campus, in the community, do some community service and some philanthropic opportunities there too. And uh, residential life is an area of opportunity for involvement and engagement. There's arts and theater opportunities. There's just a plethora of opportunities for students to get engaged in something that helps them apply potentially what they're learning in the classroom outside of the classroom. Excellent. Um, and so there's something called the Campus Activities Board at the Center for Student Involvement. Can you tell me what that is? So the Campus Activities Board is one of our three in programming boards. We have the Campus Activities Board, the Campus Traditions Board, and we also have the University Lecture Series. CAB, as for short, Campus Activities Board for short is CAB. Uh, CAB is actually the board that does a lot of the weekly programs that are constant, so they're doing two to three programs a week. Uh, we have our Movies on the Lawn every other week. Every Friday night, students can come out for Bulls Night Out and hang out on a Friday night, and it's usually either in the Marshall Student Center or somewhere outside of the Marshall Student Center. Uh, we had a comedy show just last Friday uh, for folks and an Oscar night and movies. And then they have Patio Tuesday, the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, and that's coming up soon. Uh, actually, next week we've got one coming up. Uh, on. Yes, great, lots of great. stuff going on. And so CAB does a lot of those programs. And then some of the major concerts, uh, like Bullstock, that's coming up. We have a Battle of the Bands coming up as well. So some special events, too. That's awesome. And so there's, there's a whole other side to what you're doing called fraternity and sorority life. And so I know we have a lot of students talking about wanting to get involved with these organizations. So can you give us a quick overview of what is fraternity and sorority life here at USF? 
Here at USF, we have 50 fraternities and sororities. Uh, they're actually kind of sectioned off in different councils, governing councils, and so we have the uh, Inner Fraternity Council, which has fraternities. We have the National Panhellenic Council and the Multicultural Greek Council that has fraternities and sororities, and then the Panhellenic Association that has sororities as well. And so within any one of those 50 student organizations there, uh, students can be involved in leadership and service, uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, a lot of networking that happens. Our groups also do a lot in the community. They actually collectively in the 2015, last year, in the last academic year, they actually did about 45,000 hours of community service. Wow. 45,000 hours collectively. That's a lot of service to the community. And they also raised almost $400,000 for various agencies, community agencies, and some national agencies as well. That is huge, huge impact our students are having. That's great. Um, and so, I guess the answer is yes, we want to see those students get involved who are interested. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, when can they join a fraternity or sorority? So students here can join as soon as they get here um, for some organizations. So it really depends on the organization. Some organizations allow for semester students to join. Some organizations you will have to wait until your second semester, first year, or your uh, second year. Uh, and transfer students are welcome always. Excellent. And so my note for everyone watching too is we're a big school and so Google is your friend and you can just Google USF fraternity, sorority life, USF fraternity, and the top page will most likely be right over there in the Center for Student Involvement, Fraternity and Sorority Life. And so I always recommend Google for that. Uh, but now it's time for the big question for our parents watching. What advice do you have for them as they get ready to help their students with this transition? You know, what's great is that I get every summer to do the parent orientation sessions and the family and uh, parents orientation. And so what I share with them then, and I'll share it with them today too, is to really encourage their student to get involved. What they need to do is support them and ask them questions such as, well, what are you interested in? Or what did you do in high school that you want to continue to do in college? Or what didn't you get to do in high school that you want to try out in college? And this is a great opportunity for students to just explore, explore different interests, learn something new, gain a new skill. They can get a job on campus as well. Getting a job on campus is also being involved. A lot of the offices that I rattled off earlier have jobs that students can have and can get and then they're also student leaders in those roles as well. So all the students built, doing all the programming in CAB and all the other programming boards, they're all student staff um, and student leaders. And so the parents can really just encourage them to get involved and make sure that they're not getting too involved and that they're balancing their time and making sure they're studying as well, but listening to them, seeing what they're interested in, asking them, hey, so what have you done or who have you met? What organizations have you checked out? The student organizations across campus, there's over 600 of those student organizations. And so finding some time to chat, chat with them about what their interests are or what is it that they want to learn that's new and how do they find that on the college campus. Awesome. And let's say we have a student who visits campus or they're here, they, they've moved in and they're ready to learn more. Uh, where can they find your office? Oh, we're right on the second floor of the Marshall Student Center. We're in what the area of the Marshall Student Center that they like to call the Student Life Tower. And our area spaces, we have actually two spaces on the second floor of that Student Life Tower in the Marshall Student Center. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on the program with My us tonight. My pleasure. It's always great to, to be here. And hope we'll have you back when we do season four. Yes. We'll get you back. And so uh, coming up next, we're going to be uh, speaking with the amazing and talented Dave Kloiber, our assistant director for assignments right here in housing and residential education, the person that sits on top of all these processes to help get you a spot to live here in our community. And so we're going to be talking with him. If you have any questions, go ahead, type them in the comments, send them our way, and we'll ask Dave here in real time. But first, we have our episodes of Dear Families and the next installment of our Jack Eats cooking show. We're going to roll that. More Housing Live coming your way after this. Today we're going to be making one of my favorite breakfast dishes, banana French toast. So we're going to start off just cutting up some French bread, unpeel a couple of bananas. Now you want to mash up your bananas real nice and smooth. For a recipe like this, the amounts are really quite intuitive. If you like vanilla, feel free to add as much vanilla as you want. Same goes for cinnamon. And as far as the ratio goes, I like to do about half as much nutmeg as cinnamon. And then we'll just add a little bit of milk or milk substitute of your choice to thin that out. Now we can get started on preparing our blueberry compote. Just grab a handful of blueberries, 
We're gonna add a little bit of water to just about halfway cover those blueberries. Now we'll add about a tablespoon of sugar. Get all this distributed throughout. Get a little bit of a simmer going. Once these blueberries have a nice simmer going, just lower the heat and keep them covered for a few minutes. I'm also going to cut up a lemon to add a little bit of fresh lemon juice to the blueberry compote. It adds a real nice acidity which contrasts with the sweetness of the blueberries. Now we're going to get a pan ready to fry up our French toast and then we can start putting the batter on the bread and get cooking. Now just add whatever oil you have available to the pan and the French toast won't stick. We'll heat up our pan to a little bit above medium heat. Now we're going to batter up our bread. Now we can start frying this up. You're going to want to cook your French toast for about a minute and a half, two minutes on the first side. The second side will probably cook a little bit quicker. So now we've got our banana French toast. I'm going to pour some of this delicious blueberry compote on. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make this quick and scrumptious breakfast. Join me next time and learn how to make more delicious meals. Dear families, as your student prepares to leave for college, they might be engaging with fellow students in strange new ways. But I promise it will all be okay. At the University of South Florida, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met. And here, our strangers like to become friends on the USF Class of 2021 Facebook page. So, if your student is talking to a new person on Facebook, don't fret. After all, you did spend all these years teaching them right from wrong. Dear families, you may have heard of this thing called Snapchat. Personally, I do not quite understand it. The students send pictures and videos, but they disappear after 24 hours. Perhaps taking a selfie is just their way of reminding themselves that they are still alive. Then they share the image with others to affirm that they do still exist both in the real world and the internet world. Dear families, you may visit someday and discover that your student has bruises on the forehead or knuckles. Please don't be concerned. They have made many friends using social media, but friend-making can sometimes come at a physical cost. The good thing is, if a friend-making injury occurs, it will likely be posted on social media so you can contact them and discuss the importance of spatial awareness and a respect for basic physics. We are back. For those of you just joining us, my name is Gregory Bowers. I work with Housing and Residential Education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. We're with the incredible edible Dave Kloiber from Housing Assignments. Dave, how are you doing? Doing great, Craig. Dave, you're a longtime veteran of the show, aren't oh, yeah. you? Proud of it. I'm glad that we can just wheel you out here and dust you off and then make you answer questions for everyone. <laughs> I'm glowing today, so it's okay. <laughs> Are you ready, Dave? Yeah, I'm all polished up. All right. You can so, see the shine. <laughs> and so, um, this is awkward. So Dave, <laughs> we know that room selection is coming and this is actually yes. a new process for entering freshmen. And so just can you give us an overview? What is this animal called room selection? Well, it's, a, it's our first time process here for our, return, our, our new students. Uh, we're actually, for many years now, we've allowed our returning students to go in into our system, see what's available and actually place themselves into a room. But we said, hey, why not do this with our incoming students as well? And so for the first time ever, they're going to have the opportunity to log into our system beginning on March 27th, which is a Monday. And uh, the first group of students will be able to log in, see what's available that they can choose from, and actually assign themselves. And if they have friends and they've made arrangements with their friends, even assign their friends to their uh, apartment or suite or room. You're telling me that they just get to pick their own room? Yeah, they can look through the uh, almost 1,500 to 2,000 beds that will be available and see what's available and say, that's the one I want, and actually place themselves into that room. That's very cool. And so I imagine, though, they can't just log in on the 27th and just do it on day one, right? No, they do have to complete our five steps. Um, the fifth step is the assignment process. But the first step is obviously they need to do an application. They need to tell us they're interested in living on campus. Number two is to, to pay that application fee that we'll be charging within 24 hours, well, one business day of completing the application. Number three is, um, and they don't have to do three, four in order, if they can do four or three first, but number three would be uh, to verify that their required immunizations have been submitted to Student Health Services and approved. And number four is that they've registered for orientation. And then finally, they can log in and actually select their room. 
Excellent. So there are a few steps. And just to clarify, when Dave said you have to let us know you're going to apply, you don't call Dave's cell phone and say, hey, I'm going to live there. And Dave's like, awesome. And then you're like, I live there now. And Dave's like, yeah, no. That does not work that way. you got to make sure to complete a housing application, usf.edu slash housing. Right? That's where they go. Exactly. Complete the housing application, all the steps. And so also, when you're on our website, just click housing application up at the top, select uh, first-year students, and then you'll see the five steps to living on campus and also the room selection process info. And just got a question. Thing about the application. Oh, please. Um, because they're doing room selection this year, they won't see room preferences on the application. And so because we're, they're going to be looking for the rooms that they want, so they don't need to tell us a preference. I'm glad you mentioned that because you pick your own room, and so you don't need to tell us what you prefer because <laughs> pick your own room. And so that's exactly. pretty cool. Uh, Sylvia would like to know, is there a particular time to reserve a space on campus. We're going to be notifying all students as they are ready to, uh, to select their room. So on the 27th, we'll begin that process at 10 a.m. In order to prevent people from really wiping our system out and all trying to hit it at once, we will stagger some starting times for people to start. And we'll start with those who completed everything first and then move on to those who complete uh, their steps later. And we're talking maybe 50 new people every 30 minutes, but they'll be getting that information. Once your time starts though, you'll be able to select any time thereafter up until the end of June. Excellent, well thank you Dave, thank you so much. We are out of time unfortunately. Already? There's never enough Dave time. Uh, but I'll we be back. We might, have some, we might have some more time after the commercial break. If you have questions, send them our way now. We got a short uh, break for you. We're gonna be back with more USF Housing Live after this. Maple Hall, housing approximately 230 residents, features suite-style living with double occupancy rooms where four residents share a bathroom. Parking for Maple is abundant as well, with parking lots to the south and east. Laundry for Maple is located inside the building. Maple has large pod areas, very similar to those in Juniper Hall and Poplar Hall, where residents can socialize, study, or attend one of the many programs happening throughout the year. Every resident is provided with a bed, desk, chair, and dresser. Kitchens featuring stoves and ovens are on every floor. The Marshall Student Center is a beautiful 230,000 square foot facility that is dedicated to student success. Standing tall overlooking the University of South Florida campus in Tampa, the Marshall Student Center, as called the Marshall Center or MSC, is a hub of activity, entertainment, and education. Lunchtime? Students enjoy an expansive food court on the first floor of the Marshall Center. The MSC also features a Beef O'Brady's where students gather to catch the latest Bulls game or shoot some pool, and it's always free. Behind the pool tables is USF's very own radio station, Bulls Radio. Here, students get involved and make connections while they gain on-air experience running talk shows and mixing tracks. On the first floor, Students will find a retail area that has services such as the wellness center, computer store, and dining services. If you like to volunteer, get to the CLCE when you arrive. USF's Oval Theater, on the second floor of the Marshall Student Center, is home to various presentations and events produced by and for the student body. The ballroom hosts dance, lecture sessions, and other engaging activities. Conference and meeting rooms are available throughout the MSC for student organizations to rent. The third floor is home to the Center for Student Involvement, where you can start or join a student organization or learn about campus events. Enrich your college experience by visiting New Student Connections, the Office of Multicultural Affairs, and Education Abroad. Student Government, located on the fourth floor of the Marshall Center, provides students with a way to have their voices be heard. To relax, many students visit the Skypad, a lounge where you can play games, hang out with friends, or focus on homework. At the Marshall Center, there's never a dull moment. It's the hub of student activity on campus, and it's just one more thing that's great about being a USF Bull. 
Right, we are back. My name is Gregory Bowers with Housing and Residential Education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. We're the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. And congratulations to Tom for sneaking in a question right at the end of the show. When is signing up for orientation available? That will be on March 13th. You'll be able to reserve your orientation session. And you know what that means? That means you have completed all of your housing application steps if you did the first four. Confused? You might be. Go to usf.edu slash housing and you can look up all the housing application info there. But yes, that is one of the steps to make sure that you can engage in room selection, which will open on March 27th. So make sure you do that. Make sure you are ready. For those of you who want to continue with us on Housing Live, we're going to have many more great guests joining us. And that's going to be next Monday, March 6th. We're going a little early because spring breaks the week after. And I think our whole crew is going to be out on the beach. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're going to, it's beach time for the students. And so we are going a little early. But that's going to be March 6th at 6 p.m. right here on Facebook.com slash USF Housing and YouTube.com slash USF Housing. I want to say a big thank you to our guests for coming on the program tonight. Hope to have you back in the future. And for those of you watching, make sure you do join us for future episodes. And if you have any questions, well, join us in the USF Class of 2021 Facebook group and ask away. We're happy to help. Well, that about does it for all of us here. And there's just one last thing. Go, Go Bulls! Bulls!